Hi there, Nurse Master Charlie here. In this video, I will be discussing and reviewing a blood transfusion checklist. You can use this information as part of an NCLEX review or for real life application. As a nurse, you will more than likely transfuse blood to a patient at some point in your career. These are some of the things to know and do prior to administering blood. Are you ready? First, ensure there is an order. That is what makes all of this legal. Check for consent. Make sure the patient or the representative has signed the consent to receive blood products. Some patients will not consent to receiving blood products due to their religious beliefs. Next, ensure a type and cross match are done and any other labs are done. It is also good to know and understand why the patient is receiving blood in the first place. For example, do they have a low hemoglobin? Check the patient's allergies. Have they had a blood transfusion before? Do they have any history of blood transfusion reactions? For example, temperatures or rashes or worse. Review signs and symptoms of a transfusion reaction such as fever, chills, itching, back pain, flank pain, shortness of breath, chest pain, and nausea and vomiting. Ensure IV access is patent and flush as well. Ensure the access is at least an 18 gauge which is preferred and or a 20 gauge is okay to prevent hemolysis of the blood. Obtain baseline vital signs, any abnormals, example elevated temperature. If there is a temperature, notify the provider to determine the need to proceed with the infusion and administer pre-infusion medications if needed and ordered, such as Tylenol or Benadryl, 30 minutes prior to the infusion. Obtain and prep blood tubing, which has an inline filter to filter any type of debris or actually cellular debris that may be in the blood. There are those with single or double ports. Also, you will use an isotonic fluid, namely normal saline or 0.9% NS. Now let your charge nurse know and your team know your nursing assistant know that you will be infusing blood when notified from the blood bank. The reason for this is you will need another nurse to verify the blood and the patient identification prior to infusing. After all the checks are done, then prime the blood tubing with the normal saline. Connect the IV line to the patient, then begin the transfusion. You will need to initiate the transfusion within 30 minutes of obtaining the blood. Blood is initiated slowly, staying with the patient the first 15 minutes. Vital signs are checked at five minutes, 15 minutes, then 30 minutes, then 60 minutes until completed, but no longer than four hours. These times can vary per hospital. This is to monitor for any type of transfusion reaction. Remember that packed red blood cells need to be infused and completed within two to four hours. This is to prevent any type of bacterial growth from forming within the blood. Now FFP or fresh frozen plasma is usually given over 15 to 30 minutes. And platelets are also usually given over 15 to 30 minutes. It should be noted that these times are for non-emergent situations. Now, are there any post-infusion medications to prevent fluid overload? After the infusion, of course, continue to monitor the patient. Now, does more blood need to be infused? For example, a second unit. Do they need any follow-up labs, such as a post-infusion CBC, possibly to check the hemoglobin? Dispose of blood tubing according to your hospital policy. Now, I have a whole series of bloody videos or blood administration related videos, such as the signs and symptoms of blood transfusion reactions, blood types and their compatibility explained types of blood transfusion reactions, even the order in which to draw labs and which color tubes are used for what. Now, if you found value in this video and hopefully learned a little something, please be sure to give this video a like. And if you're interested in content like this, please be sure to subscribe and hit the vote notification bell so you can be made aware of when I release new videos. Also, leave me a comment or share a story about a time when you transfuse blood yourself. Also, don't forget to share this video with those that you know who are starting nursing school or are pre-nursing or anybody who may benefit. Please be sure to check out my many other nursing related topic videos. Also, please be sure to check out my blog on my website, www.nursemastercharlie.com. I'll leave links in the description. So until the next video, God bless and goodbye, and go be a safe nurse. Oh yeah, Nurse Master